Welcome back to Doing Business in Rwanda. Rwanda's government has put emphasis in the development of incubation hubs in order to develop the local solutions. Rwanda has a relatively young population who are fast in developing an interest in innovation and technology with growing numbers of scholars choosing to continue their studies in the field of information science. The growth in the ICT industry for us has uh, been a tremendous, has had a tremendous impact on the ability for us to have a business today because um, things like mobile phone penetration or um, access to internet, um, GSM network coverage, all these are things that um, greatly impact our business and now that we have a mobile phone penetration of up to maybe up to about 62% um, um, in Rwanda, yeah, of the population, that's something that's really significant for us and makes business sense for us to be building mobile applications. What we try to do is to encourage startups, uh, those young innovators who might not have all the necessary tools and capabilities to develop their talents and grow them. So we've got places like Kelab, which is exactly uh, that kind of idea. We had uh, a Technopole. We, we are building a Technopole. Previously, we had an ICT park to all try and provide an incubation uh, environment for, for, for startups. And we're encouraging uh, universities and even private uh, investors to start up those kind of facilities and be able to invest in, our, in the creativity of our young uh, generation, which is evident. So uh, there are a mix of uh, incentives, not, not only the fiscal, which is there part of the investment code, but also things like easy access to finance, networking, mentorship, and support. This is a space where we give chance to people. So they come, uh, most of them actually can't afford paying rent out there or even internet, so they sit here. And, and one of the things that we really promote is collaborations. We've seen uh, people meeting here in standing companies, but also part of people that we take in uh, as members, we either take in individuals or startup companies. So they sit here, they use the facility, they use the internet. Uh, we, have, uh, we provide both business and technical mentorship. Uh, we conduct capacity building events. And all that is done in order to help these companies or individuals to, to scale up their ideas or innovation. Uh, another key thing that K-Lab does is to link uh, people who have good solutions with the outside world. And we do that through uh, a series of events that we conduct here. One of them is called Meet the Market, where, for example, if someone is working on an application that can help farmers, we call farmers, they come here. and then. The guy working on, on, on that product presents to the farmers. And we've seen that from those kind of uh, uh, gathering, people are signing now contracts or they even exchange business cards. And we've seen uh, many startup companies or individuals now uh, signing deals with different types of people in the country in, in all the key sectors. Technology is a cross-cutting enabler and people are beginning to understand that young people are launching companies and working hard to create solutions, both for the local and the international markets. When you look at what has been going on in the country, uh, for example, you have the infrastructure in place, you have a very uh, friendly uh, regulatory framework uh, or environment where it's very easy to start a business. So what is needed now is local people who create local content uh, and that's where Kelab comes in because we give a chance to young people to uh, leverage uh, space and other programs to be able to create local content. For us this has been a journey that has empowered us. Um, the ability for us to say that this is a problem that we've identified, these are the skills that we have and uh, we can solve this problem with you know, what we have and the other opportunities that we leverage to be able to come up with these solutions. I would say that for us it's been really empowering and it's still, it's, it's a tough journey, it's been tough right from the start, we're three, three, three years old right now, but um, I would say we've, we've grown as individuals in terms of, you know, what we're able to do in terms of our technical skills, uh, it's opened doors for us, we've been able to um, learn a lot of things and we feel like uh, for us it's, uh, it's been an experience that has opened up our minds and uh, we believe that the possibilities of what we can do are limitless. The growth of information communication technologies is expected to increase employment and boost the country's competitiveness and economic growth. We aim at turning Rwanda into the next uh, you know, innovation hub. So uh, being able to encourage uh, 
the innovation and creativity and then probably see the next big thing in IT coming out from Kigali is one of the things we are looking in, in terms of turning Rwanda into an ICT hub. But most importantly, I think we need to see ICT as uh, an enabler uh, for the other uh, regional hub strategies and uh, it goes hand in hand with improving our doing business environment. So in the past three years, um, we've built um, applications across different sectors um, in health, education, um, agriculture, um, government, the public sector, um, as well as um, you know business. And uh, our applications have been, we've built these applications for NGOs, for international companies that are doing things in East Africa, um, for uh, government institutions that you know want to reach the public in through mobile technologies on broadband growth rwanda uganda and kenya are the first countries in east africa set to roll out a high speed fourth generation 4g broadband network that delivers download speed of up to 100 megabytes per second well when i look at uh, the east african community i would like to mainly pick on uh, uh, I'll, I'll call it a project that they are they're just starting of having regional integrated disease surveillance. This is excellent because it's basically we are saying if we have an outbreak or a potential outbreak in one of our uh, member states, then it is picked. If it's entered into the system, any other person in the five countries can pick it up, can see that it's happening. And so they are able to prepare and prevent the populations ahead of time. Where Rwanda will be ahead in that is because we already have a national integrated disease surveillance system. So to us, uh, we're glad that uh, ES is looking at it and so we'll be able to do it at a regional level. And we are glad as Rwanda, we are taking the lead because we already have the national one. In ICT, uh, what is interesting is that you can do a solution here in Rwanda and it works elsewhere. And when you, when you talk about the East African community, uh, the five countries, we share a lot. And, and, and when you look at the, and the path we are on, they are quite similar. So in what we do here, we always tell people that the solution they are working on, uh, they, they don't just have to think in terms of the local market, but it's about uh, the East African market, which is made one, 135 million of people. And, and we've been... We're seeing people considering that and what they are doing. For example, the, there's, a, there's a company here who is working on an application that promotes transparency. And, and currently, they are talking with people in Burundi because they, want, they think that solution can even work in Burundi. We're already uh, making the most of this opportunity. Um, we're already deploying an application, um, a health application across the region. Um, and Uganda will be the first country where that will be deployed. Um, We've worked with the Ministry of the East African Community to build um, a mobile platform, just helping traders have access to information uh, relating to non-tariff barriers, um, so they can, you know, it can ease their uh, business process simply because we're now a regional block and uh, this application is working regionally. Randa is looking ahead to be the regional ICT hub. The signing of the ICT protocol by the East African Community Heads of State in November 2012 provides a platform to harmonize policies of e-West, cyber laws, digital broadcasting, and East African Community Broadband ICT infrastructure network. The people are, are now understanding the need of ICT and what ICT can bring as added value to their businesses, to their daily businesses. Uh, and, and when you look, for, the, for example, at the program that are currently running, for example, there's one, one called uh, ICT Awareness Campaign, where uh, the Ministry of Youth and ICT with some business companies, they tour all the districts, trying to explain to people what is ICT and what it can do uh, to add value on their businesses. So, so the, business, the business itself is, is really... Uh, uh, there, there are many business opportunities, as I can say, in, in ICT and other uh, sectors. The draft protocol itself was a statement, uh, like a high-level statement of intent uh, among the member countries of the East African community to cooperate on ICT issues, to make sure that our networks can interoperate, to make sure that the rules, the rules of doing business are the same across the region, to make sure that we build a big market, uh, ICT market in the region. Uh, both for our domestic consumption but also to be able to attract uh, investments together. So uh, 
the regional market is, is a big market. It links us to the rest of the world. But I think strategically what we are looking at is uh, to see the region actually as one market.